it's Nina from VR Focus. I'm joined by... Oscar Warner, I'm president of Toby Tech. So tell me a little bit about who you guys are and what you guys do. So Toby is the world's largest eye tracking company. So we do eye tracking for PC, for general computers, for smartphone, for VR and AR, and a lot of specialty, uh, specialty markets applications like robotic surgery, etc. Mm -hmm. And you've got three different sort of sections to what you do, is that right? Within Toby? Yes. Yeah, we have one section called Toby Dynavox. They do eye tracking for people with disability. So somebody with ALS or Rett syndrome can communicate with their families. Another one, which is Toby Pro, sells to researchers and, and, and research institutions and market research, etc. Um, and then we have Toby Tech, who is building the, developing the core eye tracking technology and sells it to consumer markets such as AR, VR, PC, smartphone, etc. Okay, so focusing on Toby Tech, how long has that existed for? What are you guys trying to do with it? And so Toby, as such, was founded in 2001, uh, so 17 years, so quite a while. Uh, Toby Tech, uh, can it be like four or five years? Uh, so we, we decided to build the company out of revenue, and therefore we focused in the early stage on, on speci specialized applications uh, where price points are higher. Um, uh, then a couple of years ago, we decided, yes, now we think the market is ready to take take the technology to consumer markets. Mm -hmm. And that's when Toby Tech was founded. Okay, and you've announced some new partnerships as well that will be using your technology in virtual reality, is that right? Yes, we just announced a partnership with Qualcomm, uh, where we have ported our eye tracking algorithms onto the Snapdragon SoC, um, and obviously then targeting the standalone uh, VR and AR market. So that's super exciting to us. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of standalone uh, HMDs that will be coming out this year, but you also also mentioned augmented reality. What, what have you been experimenting with? Uh, so we have a full uh, VR team, a tech team, and we have a full AR tech team as well. So we're building different, it's two different technology um, uh, uh, versions, if you will, built on the same algorithm core, but and the optical setup is different than AR and VR. We have an extremely strong demand from the VR and AR side and all the, the VR player being a little bit ahead in time, but we see all the same brands and more brands uh, focusing on the AR side and coming a little bit after. Mm -hmm. And so both markets are very strong. Mm -hmm. In AR, we see a very strong uptick on the enterprise side. So that's super, exci super exciting as well. Talking about virtual reality first, yeah. uh, let's talk about the benefits of eye tracking and what you can do with it compared to sort of normal conventional VR. Yeah. So what's happening is, is we're, we're categorizing the benefits in two major buckets. Uh, one is uh, better devices and the other bucket is better experiences. Um, if we start with the better devices side, um, the first um, subcategory, subcategory there is foveated rendering. So that is basically we can um, if you look at your thumb, uh, you have high resolution right at your thumb, the size of a thumbnail, while out here in the periphery it's all blurry. But any VR AR display or computer display today, they're rendering the entire screen in full resolution. Mm -hmm. So that means like everything apart from a little part in, this, in, in the middle is waste. And that's driving a lot of cost and a lot of power, uh, which is unnecessary. Given that we know where you're looking on the screen, you can suddenly say, or oh, like, I only render the core where you're looking in high resolution and the rest in low resolution. When I change my gaze, um, the, high resolu the, the area which is rendered in high resolution is, is changing. So As a user, you cannot see it, but you're, you're, you can reduce the number of pixel renders with up to 50%. So that basically drives saving in, or either the user can have better graphical experience, or you can get the lower cost hardware, or a higher frame rate, or you can put yourself on a trade-off in between. Yeah, one part is you can do it realistic, you can do it like you can do more depth and things like that, and one part is just saving the GPU power. Mm -hmm. So you're saving the power on the most expensive piece in, in, in the system. Second part of the better device category is you, um, since the headset knows where your eyes are, you can do automatic IPD adjustments or you can tell the user if the headset is off, um, so he gets a better graphical experience, and that's all automated. Uh, and the third part is, we didn't show you here today, but you can do Iris ID, so you can do profile management, etc., cetera, um, um, which makes the, it's much more convenient, convenient to you. When can we as consumers uh, be looking at this being in our future headsets? Is it gonna be like next year? So we have, we have announced that we're working with five major VR partners, mm -hmm. of which Qualcomm is one. Um, um, the, we have said that we believe headsets will come out uh, late 18 or 19, 
it's obviously the HMD manufacturers that decides. Course, yes. but, but that's kind of what we would believe. If we then move to the better experience side, uh, which is what you have experienced here today, it's, it's a couple of categories there. The first one is eye contact, but the headsets do not have any idea of where you're looking and therefore they cannot replicate that. So all multiplayer games would be characters staring straight ahead. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a complete no-go. I think eye tracking is an absolute fundament, in, fun, fundament to any social experience in VR. Of course, yes. Uh, the second category in better experience is um, what we call hand-eye coordination. So given that developers get, um, without eye tracking, they have the information about what the, your hand movements. But with eye tracking, they also get the information of where you're looking. So imagine I have something in my hand now and I want to hit the chair there or the, um, or, the, uh, or the headset lying on that table. A little bit of angle difference between. Without eye tracking, developers will only have this movement and they have to try to decide which one am I trying to hit based on my movement. That's very hard because this isn't really precise. With eye tracking, they would know I'm trying to hit the chair or I'm trying to hit the headset. And they can use that to improve hand-eye coordination, mm -hmm. which is what you felt when you were trying to hit the, hit the balls with the magic mm -hmm. stones. Yeah. It's much easier to hit them. But it's up to developers to, to choose how much they use. But it's extreme power to developer to know, they would know your intent. They would know you're trying to hit here or there. And that must be powerful. Of course, yes. Uh, the next thing there um, is, is, um, is moving from a three-step to a two-step interaction. When you were selecting movies, um, Without eye tracking, it becomes one look, two point, three click. With, with eye tracking, it becomes one look, two click. One look, two click. So it's taken away a large portion of the interaction. And the last thing here is um, removing head pointing. Head pointing, it's a little bit funny, you know, because we have, we've gotten used to pointing with our heads in AR and VR. So I'm claiming head pointing should go because we never do it in real life. And if you're trying to create virtual reality, do not create behavior that doesn't exist. For augmented reality, you mentioned that all of these things are slightly different. What, are, what is it that you're doing there that's different to VR? So um, the use case examples are very similar. Uh, in augmented reality, the strength of eye tracking is even stronger because a lot of the display technologies require that the display knows where your eyes are. So in AR, what we face is I have to have it. In VR, it's like, oh, it's great, I'm, I, I, I want to have it. But in, a, in AR, a lot of technology, you have to have it to render correctly. But the use cases are very similar then. You want to, I mean, you're, you're walking in the street and you want to pick something up. Do you want to point your head to it in AR? No, because you don't do that in real life. Imagine an AR application where you, it's like a, you're playing American football and you have the ball, right? And you want to throw it to that virtual character running over the street is running full speed across the street or across the pitch and you're looking at or, or and you, your option without eye tracking is either trying to mm, trying to point to that person with your forehead this is going to be super hard or uh, pointing at it with your controller and saying that which is very unimmersive or you do exactly what you do in real life you just follow the person with your eyes very easy and then you press a button and you hit them so that's a very similar, very strong use case. Consumer electronics today is blind. It has no concept of me. This phone, it doesn't know if I'm looking at it right now. It doesn't, it knows where it is. It's got a gyro or it's got a GPS. It knows how I turn it, it's got a gyro. It knows that I'm touching it. It knows what I'm saying, but there's no idea if I'm looking at it, if I'm looking away, what I've seen in the UI, what I've not seen in the UI. So we're changing that. We're making this, the, the device aware of your interest. It will know what you're looking at, what you saw, what you did not see. Is there a website that we can go to to find out more? Yes, uh, there is toby.com um, and then you can find out more. Um, um, and subsections there is tobygaming.com where we talk a lot about the gaming use cases. What if a HMD manufacturer are looking to use this, how do they approach you? Uh, they they call me. <laughs> no, but they, I mean they contact Toby. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, sales representatives in the U.S., in China, in Taiwan, in Japan, in Korea. So so it's it's relatively easy to get hold of us if you go to the website and call, and and, and just contact us. That is our main business. So just get get us uh, get in contact and we will get back to you. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right. Uh, head over to vrfocus.com if you want to find out more about VR, AR, or immersive technologies, and I will see you there. All right. Thank Thanks you. a lot. All right.